With the pop culture movement that is the era's tour and Taylor Swift's fame skyrocketing to a place that seems insurmountable, I've noticed a new trend in the book world. It looks as though authors and publishers are aware of the reach that Taylor has, and with that comes the Swifties, including myself, being on the lookout for anything Taylor Swift coded. And so, in the past few years, I've noticed quite a few romance books with titles derived from a Taylor Swift lyric, album, or song title, which makes me think, are publishers doing this purposefully, or is it just a mere coincidence? So I thought, let's read some books that are named after to Taylor Swift lyrics and titles and see if they're actually Taylor coded or whether it seems that the publishing companies and authors are just using the title for the sake of it. I also wanted to say that reading is subjective so any book that I don't like and I talk about disliking it's not personal but instead it's just my opinion and of course opinions can differ so long story short enjoy the video. So, like, not too much, and it's just less than 300, so... This is my dairy cat, Teapot. She is called Teapot. She will be joining us for this portion of the video. I've been reading I Wish She Would by Eva... I think it's De Laurier's. This is obviously the title to Taylor Swift's 1989 track, I Wish She Would. Some of these books are going to be titles, some of these books are going to be lyrics. It just depends on what I can find. I am pleasantly surprised by this book. It's definitely a YA book, don't get me wrong, but I think it's more like 15, 16, 17, YA, very American. It really feels like Kissing Booth in the Summer I Turned Pretty and All the Boys I Loved Before. Specifically, like it feels very Jenny Hahn in its style and plot and, you know, the miscommunication. I will say this book is heavily based on miscommunication because we've got our two main characters, it's dual POV. We have Ethan, who is our main male love interest. His dad has become super famous over recent years and so he's battling with the fact that his dad is not the father that he needs anymore. And we also have on the opposite side, Natalia, who is our female love interest, female main character. Her parents are currently going through a divorce. So we've got those two things going on and it starts with them after prom night. They're together and they're chatting away because they're best friends and they kind of cross a bit of a boundary between friends and not and something more and something happens and then we get the kind of present perspective of the two starting senior year just being completely opposite sides like there's a lot of tension between them and the reason why i like the miscommunication is because it really drives the tension forward and as we know if you've been on the channel for a while I'm a tension girly. If there is tension and I really feel like these characters want one another, platonically, emotionally, like all the things, not just in a lustful way. I hate when it's just lust. You really feel that they have a connection and that's what I like. Um, you kind of need the miscommunication, but we're slowly in dribs and drabs kind of getting them to talk. The problem is people just keep coming and interrupting. But yeah, I think because I just wasn't really expecting much, I'm enjoying it. So I wish you would. And is it, and let's think about the lyrics from I wish you would. Yeah, and I think because the song that I Wish You Would was all about miscommunication and just saying what you want to get the person back, you know, it's 2am in my... 2am, here we are, see your face, hear my voice in the dark. I wish you would come back, wish I never hung the phone like I did, I wish you knew that, I'll never forget you as long as I live, and I wish you were right here, right now, it's all good. I wish you would, it's giving that. talk about it this book was so sweet it was really lovely it reminded me a lot of the netflix like original films where like to all the boys of the before where you know it's very it's like so high school coded and it's set on the beach it very much was actually like the summer i turned pretty and is it moxie like those two put together it feels a little bit like that which i personally really enjoyed I'm giving this book a four stars like i said i was having a great time reading this it's very short it's under 300 pages definitely ya so but i also will say that if i was younger this probably would have been a book 
that stuck with me for a long time like it's just that type of book i'm glad it, i read it now but when i was younger i definitely would have appreciated this a lot more so i just want to point that out that if you are on the younger side i'm I definitely picked this up but i wish you would was it giving the song i wish you would i think so i really do think the author did a great job at doing it you always knew how to push my buttons you gave me everything and nothing i'm just popping in here because i literally just realized what i actually wanted to say about the book i've just read if you do not like miscommunication this book is not for you the whole premise of this is that there is a massive piece of miscommunication and because of that it then leads them to separate and not be a part of one another's lives for a little bit and when they come back together they're constantly quipping and digging at one another because of this miscommunication and every time one of the characters tries to be like well i did it because of this and tries to explain the other one gets annoyed walks off so if you don't like miscommun miscommunication don't read this book and personally i'm not a miscommunication girly i don't like the trope i think it's just so it's a little bit lazy it, do it doesn't really do anything for a lot of books but this one really works because it shows how naive they are because they are teenagers at the end of the day and i know I, when i was 17 what i was trying to say never fully was articulated well because of this com miscommunication you feel the pining between them it's so lovely to see them go from the characters they are and also this book takes place over a day like one singular day so it's really nice to see what actually happens in that day because also i think about this the times in my lives where things like this have happened to me were on school trips or a day out or something that was never just a mundane day in my life it was always an event where things would happen like at the final like my final night out at uni all everything went down within like a few hours so i just think it's interesting that this author really understood that things tend to happen quickly when you're outside of like your regular routine and i really liked that because i think having it over a day really shows how quickly things can change but yeah sorry i'm gonna let you get back into the real the, the rest of the vlog now so i just was sitting here writing in my book journal and i was like i didn't even mention that so anyway bye bye yeah it was definitely giving the song so on to the next i actually i'm gonna pick the next one up on my kindle because i saw on prime was it like the prime reading that they had one called never ever getting back together this is the book so never ever getting back together it says he's a heartbreaker she's an independent woman they are never ever getting back together so i'm guessing this is like a second chance romance everyone remembers their first love jess and thomas definitely does Jess Tom oh Jess Thomas definitely does ah so it is second chance romance oh Jamie broke her heart via text she's sworn off romance this is how many pages please tell me the page count kindle okay 266 pages so it's, again a super short romance I don't mind a short romance but that is crazy short so the only thing is I don't want it to be insta relove so I'm just saying I don't want it to be insta like they're instantly back together vibes but we'll see. So I'm going to give this a go now. And I'll get back to you for never, ever getting back together. Like ever. To be totally honest, I am how many pages through this book? I'm 7% through and already I'm like, this is, I'm not enjoying this too much. More so just the dialogue is so weird. Um, it's 90% dialogue, like there's not a lot of actual talk, like written word. That's like, everything is just dialogue. And we haven't even been introduced, we're three chapters in, haven't been introduced to our main guy. There's so much backstory about this wedding that's going on that isn't even realistically to do with our main character the main character doesn't really seems to have like i don't know she's a bit weird because it's like she seems down to earth but then at the same time she seems to be think she's better than everyone i don't know how to explain it but yeah she's a very judgy we have a very judgy main character which i'm not fond of but as you can see the weather is supposed to be 26 degrees and super sunny today but I don't know, it's not giving that. So yeah, I'm gonna keep reading this though and I'll update you as we go. So I don't like her. I would literally die of embarrassment if I did that to someone or someone did that to me after knowing them all of four seconds. Move on. I have 
thoughts on this book. I'm 23% of the way through. First of all, our main character is annoying me because she holds a grudge. And I'm a girly, I hold a grudge for certain things. But things from 12 years ago that genuinely haven't really had a lot of relevancy since. Basically, long story short, she, when she was 16, she met a guy at a party who she had a crush on for a really long time and they proceeded to, you know, do stuff that you do when you're 16. He then got back with his girlfriend. Like, you learn that very early on, that's not a spoiler. And then he just never spoke to her again. So she, so this, this girl ghosted all of her friends, like her best friend, because this guy was in the same friendship group and has not had a boyfriend since. What he did, totally shitty, shouldn't have done that. He's a 16 year old boy, clearly not, not thinking about other people's feelings. He shouldn't have done it. If a guy did that to me and my best friend was like semi friends with him, I, I would then not ghost her because of what he did. Jess, who is the main girl, she is so annoying. She's so entitled, so insufferable. And it's making it very difficult to like, but like the Jamie, who was the love interest, he's actually really nice and he's trying to apologize. And he's like, I know I can't apologize. Let me do this thing for you. And she's just being not very nice. Yeah, she's very self-righteous, which is really interesting because I've not really read a character like that in a long time. Like, I don't, I'm going to read this book. I'm going to read it and I'm going to complain about it. You're welcome. But know that I don't want to. And I know, I've said it before, I can DNF a book. I can, but... For the sake of this video, I'm not going to, so enjoy. I hate men who make funny jokes when they're not. Specifically because this is written by a woman. What is she thinking? He's also said, they also keep saying that this guy dumped her by text. He didn't dump her. They weren't together. This morning I finished Never Ever Getting Back Together. I'm currently reading Harry Potter, which is why it's not on the screen. I finished that book this morning. It was terrible. I hate being a hater of books because normally if I know I'm not gonna like a book I just DNF it because I don't want to give it a bad review because I get I feel guilty but seriously that book was poorly written bad plot characters were so unlikable there was no romance between the two characters she was just a terrible main character and honestly just a terrible person she made everything about herself and there was something that was said in the book and I feel like none of you are going to read this book. So please don't mind me giving this mild spoiler. Um, and I just don't recommend you read the book anyway. It's a waste of time. In the book, he has a daughter. And she's like, would you ever want to go back on the road with your band? And he's like, I don't know, because I've got my daughter. And then he goes, mm, no, actually, because I'm seeing you. They have not been together probably longer than a week, one week, and he's saying he wouldn't go and do this thing, not because he's got a daughter to care for, but because he's seeing her. Where are the priorities here? Because they are not with the daughter. They are not with the daughter. The lead character, Jess, was so entitled. She thought the world revolved around her. She never had a boyfriend since Jamie did this thing to her, which is completely fine, but she blamed him for that which makes no sense she's like yeah well he did this thing to me she got off all of her friends because of this girl like like I i'm I i'm actually baffled how this has a higher than three star rating on goodreads it felt like an early 2000s book it was published last year for context october last year it felt like an early 2000s british novel because it's british like the language she used like she one point they say sod off who says sod off in 2024 you're gonna say piss off nobody says sod off anymore anyway i gave the book one singular star I would I wouldn't recommend it. It was not good. I, I had a terrible time reading it I and I didn't want to DNF it because that's the whole point of this video which is obviously jumping on the Taylor Swift bandwagon. She's so popular and she's so massive and they know that people want Swifty coded things. Are the books actually good? Are they actually Taylor Swift coded? That one wasn't. I wish she would was. Are they good? Are they just using Taylor Swift's song titles and lyrics to gain readers because after reading that one, I definitely think so. Anyway, in other news, I started, after that I started 
let the games begin this is obviously a reference to this is obviously a reference to ready for it from reputation no baby let the games begin. i'm 86 pages through which am i liking this so far yes is it a very mediocre book yes it I don't know why at the moment I just maybe think I've overdone romance a little bit it's like it's my own fault I really I really think it's my own fault I've just read a lot of romance books as of late and because of that I'm just starting to see the same thing it's becoming predictable and I know what's going to happen which is I think the author does a really good job of bringing up problems that people of colour face every day that you just don't even think about main character olivia some of the stuff she talks about being a person of color is so interesting but also her being a woman and kind of having to make space for herself in a room because she's a lawyer and it's obviously quite male dominated not feeling like an imposter like she worked hard to be there so far i'm really interested in the actual plot of olivia not so much zeke zeke's a little bit boring to me our main characters have only just met so there's nothing to do with the romance at the moment but that's all i have to say about this one this is an olympic sports romance so we have zeke who is our athlete from team gb and he's like the star athlete like an athlete's athlete it says he's in athens claim the title of fastest man in the world so he's a runner and then we have olivia who is who is training to be a lawyer she gets to go to athens for an internship and something happens when she's there there that completely changes the course of her trip to athens for the olympics quite literally bump into one another and that's what we're up to at the moment um, also i also really love this cover as well so we've had so far 89 with i wish you would red with never ever getting back together and now we've got a rep coded books and if you don't know i'm a reputation girly to my core our reputation is my favorite taylor album let's get reading this i'm gonna try and read as much of this as possible today just because i have so many other books in my tbr of a book called i think it was called under the greek moon which i read i want to say in 2021 and i didn't really like that book i think it was definitely for an old audience it wasn't for me i was not the target demographic this reminds me of that except it's younger yes i am enjoying it it's like it's a fine read it's nothing groundbreaking and like i said i'm just so unbothered about zeke as the love interest but i really like olivia so i am finding it difficult it's most definitely not as bad as never ever getting back together i think that's one of the worst books i read this year it was so bad this one is just an okay read i definitely think if you're really big into sports for this isn't even actually it's not even focusing on sports like it's the setting is the olympics but it's not focusing on the sport itself on page 125 and it's 300 and 338 pages so i think a quarter of the way through the book i think i really don't like about certain romance books and that this is doing what i don't like is when the author instantly says that they're attracted to one another and i get that that is an instantaneous thing but i don't like it in romance romance books because it sets up to be quite insta lovey it's very difficult to create that pining and i feel at the moment they say that they're attracted to one another i kind of lose interest like you want to know they're attracted to one another without explicitly being told which is a very difficult thing to get across in a book but i've read many books that do it well he, in the crowd it was like she was doing something and he was like everybody was looking elsewhere but he couldn't take her eyes off her and instantly i was like well we're not even like we haven't even hit the 100 page mark at this point and already we're getting that but we'll see what happens with it i might you know change my mind something might happen in these in this next two third in these next two thirds that i think wow <laughs> I finished reading Let the Games Begin by Rafaro Faith Mazura. Did I enjoy the book? It's a, it's a bit of a weird one because yes it was like it was just a fun romance and I knew what I was getting myself into but there was just something off and I, I don't think I enjoyed the writing style of this book. It felt very tell not show. They would talk about Zeke who is the Olympian training, but we wouldn't see any of that. And so it wasn't focused on the sports aspect of the fact, and the fact that it's the Olympics as well. Like it wasn't focused on that at all. And when the romance finally happened, it felt like there was no build up. It just felt like they got together and that was that, which I just, I didn't like. 
what I didn't like. I, I understand why the author, why the author did what they did at the end, but it just it just didn't feel very like I wasn't bothered, and I I, I wanted the book to be over by page two hundred, so I think that really says a lot about the book. It sounded so promising, a sports Olympic romance. Literally, the Olympics had just finished, and it just didn't it didn't land very well, to be completely honest. So I I get let the games begin is just in general, a, you know, a very well known saying, but in the context of Taylor Swift. This is this was not rep coded. If anything, this was more like a fearless type of book. So I, I, yeah, I wasn't fond of that. Let's just finish this video by talking about the concept of books being marketed with Taylor Swift lyrics as titles and Taylor Swift songs as titles. So. We've read a Reputation in 1989 and a Red Indicator 3 books. I would say the only book that felt like it was doing the song justice was I Wish You Would. I really enjoyed this. It felt very 1989 coded, set on the beach, teenage love. It was very, very 1989 coded. And I do feel as though the author took the song and wrote the book rather than the other way around. Because with these two, it felt like the authors wrote the book and then thought, hmm, or probably the publishing team or marketing or whatever thought oh Taylor Swift is really big at the moment let's use a Taylor Swift title as the title of your book because it'll it'll get more traction to it which I totally understand but this was not reputation coded at all like it wasn't even really any Taylor album coded and they're never ever getting back together that I felt like it was just a cop out of a title there are so many other things that they could have done and when I like I said I was reading the Goodreads reviews and everybody was saying how they read this book because it was a Taylor Swift title yet there was just nothing Taylor Swifty about it at all I'm reading Hopeless by Elsie Silver but just imagine it doesn't say that that. that book felt ridiculous so I do feel as though a lot of publishing companies and people in the publicity world are very aware of Taylor Swift's scope at the moment and the fact that everybody wants something to do with Taylor Swift and that is why they're using the titles. I feel like we could definitely do a part two to this video because I've obviously only had three books. They're also all romance, which seems to be the case for a lot of Taylor Swift title books, which I feel like that says a lot. They definitely know the demographic because obviously most authors of romance are women and a lot of the people who consume romance books are also women. That is that for this video. Are Taylor Swift lyric books most definitely marketed to you because of the fact that they're Taylor Swift songs? Yeah. They are, but if that's what you want, and a lot of the time, to be honest, that's what I want, I'm gonna read them. I ended up giving, I didn't say, I gave Let the Games Begin a two stars. So two of them were duds, you know, that's just how it goes, but go and read, I wish you would. I really like, I'm gonna keep going on about it, but I really love this book. It was really surprising how much I loved it. So that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed me reading some Taylor Swift inspired book titles, and I will see you all in the next one. If you do wanna see a part two, or you want me to read titles by another artist, let me know, and I'll I'll see you guys all in my next video.